And so these long years at last are filled, the sun's, sunset's light growing as the darkness dawns. I saw your face in the clouds one day. It seems to me you dreamt and knew not where you were, whence you came or whence to go. The wind dispersed your visage, the fire smoked to me. I heard the wind sing, scorched by the flames of cruel, empty love. Did you hear my heartbeat in that thunder? My eyes as the lightning flashed amid a mountain snowstorm, the gale whipping tons of ice into the crannies of our bone, bones. The forest falls. Can you hear it? Snow trembling on my cabin's cornice, shaking the roof to rattle and sliding off with a chilling thud. The weight of your past upon me falls thus. I am gone from the dark groves wherein you cast your spells about me. I will grieve your love no more. And that was actually, when I came up with that, was much calmer, like, and so these long years at last are filled. The sunset's light growing as the darkness dawns. I saw your face in the clouds one day. It seemed to me you dreamt and knew not where you were, whence you came or whence to go. The wind dispersed your visage. The fire spoke to me. I heard the wood sing, scorched by the flames of cruel, empty love. Did you hear my heart beat in that thunder? My eyes are the lightning flashed amid a mountain snowstorm. The gale whipping tongues of ice into the crannies of our bones. The forest falls. Can you hear it? Snow trembling on my cabin's cornice, shaking the roof to rattle and sliding off with a chilling thud. The weight of your past upon me falls thus. I am gone from the dark groves wherein you cast your spells about me. I will grieve your love no more. I won't say who that's about. It's better that I not, in fact. It's one of those kind of things. It's better not to be spoken of much. Encounter with a demon, something like that. I just might as well keep on doing a couple more here. I'm just going through again, folder here, and decide might I'll do some more for your John O'Hara and all my other poetry and the friends who do like my writing and... All the people in Wikipedia say the guy can't write properly. Oh, well, never mind who you are. Uh, who the people who says that? Who are they anyway to say that? Anyway, but... Oh, yeah, all right. Why not do this one? i got to hold it with my left hand here and hold it so I can read here. And, and this is aimed so I don't I lose it. If I lose it a little bit, I'm sorry I lose it. But I'll try and get it aimed and then uh, and then get my finger from crossing it and hold it so it's got the... So you can see it there. we go. i got to get the position to right here. I guess it's got to be held this way, higher. Uh, okay, there. And I've got to have it like my head is over here now, and that's aimed. Oh, take a breath. Reflections of a greater glory. Higher mountains. Again. Is all that man will ever see or feel. Extensions of the human hand and mortal eye probe outward in a naming right. Sensitivity is checked by metal frost, distant, ever distant chrome, ever distancing by thought, a well wound veil. Remembrance of instant inspired phrases, fresher words are all that is that this hand tonight tired has to scribe in ink. Yet all that is, a coded, classified, circuited, projected sphere, charged by energies and times and matters, warped by theorism. For though we know its shape, its flow, or so some want, even a glimpse of its nature thus is necessarily fallen contrivance. There the human heart and flesh have never, maybe not yet, roamed. Never has the will or waking breath strawed thence. Have any looked upon the moon unmasked? For we find ourselves at this ancient center, as it always it was it so. But all is but perception, even polished, numbered dreams, equally far from spirit dancing pins and hearts. Sense, whiffs of laws that shift anon and thence, stranger distance and mere twisted rays of light, points too bright, too infinitesimal to be escaped, under starry dome or blue deceiving, endlessly profound sky. Only so far outward can conjecture reach. The heart thirsts for fertile earth and tender green. 
and lofty mountains under radiant living skies. For can't we see, but only see by defining or cultivated guess, but all is changed beyond the senses of the walking flesh. Must past or distant is never known, ever spreading mystery, presumed brought within the range of human worlds and reach, so called, so shaped, just yet human reflection, off all of stupid, lonely, unscienced flesh. Knowing this, and dreaming more, then this is just another knowing to throw away and life resume, and Pushkin. Scientists hew out of chaos into dumb, mute matter. Poets listen to silent tomes within and far beyond. Dreamers, dreamers, back to other verse, something away from something this dreadful, this terse. The reference to Pushkin is I had a, a, a triple thing. It was in Russian and English and all Russian. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, this is uh, uh, from my winter to Colorado and back. This is either on route. Yeah, sure. This is, I think, whether this was no, no, no. No, well, I think this is after I came back, but no, I don't think this was before my surgery, or I was it after my surgery from my old surgery. I got flown back to, from Colorado to San Jose, met with William Everson, uh, long story, and then went to Victoria to have my jawbone cleansed of, oh, it was going to kill me, right? And it started in Aspen on New Year's and if I head cold in a, in a drain in my jaw that had been put in my when my, my uh, wisdom teeth had come out. And I'd gone to Colorado, and uh, never mind, I got home, I got it fixed. But anyway, long, I'll start alone. I'll try and calm down for this, I'll try not to be so overly dramatic. But I can't help it, because this is all, I'm, I'm looking at the stuff I'm writing, and you haven't, I have not even touched the philosophical writings I'm looking at, or the political surveillance, I'm already going, like, even back then, I was only 27, when this is going on, 27, 28, I think. Yeah, 26, 27, 28. Before I got in, wow, yeah, yeah. Before I moved, really got into a little bit Whistler, but I was already around there then. But long, unknown are the winter roads. Snow covers many things, revives a frost. The southern way to Gimli's light is hazardous and fraught with deceits. The icy path to Thule lies north. For such a journey, the way is dark. I am unprepared. All fame is forbidden, as always. Such a peril is high-cherished dream. As for Nidafels, Hell, or that other more mysterious unnamed realm, is there any purpose there but twisting roads and palaces of frost and stone and bitter dark? Many of the ways leading there. And as for the middle worlds, ye gods, ye giants, ye men, how much too well I know your ways. Your recurrent arcs of light, your cycles of repeating change, your poison trees. Beyond these nine worlds, what lays, what beckons, dare I dream of other paths, other airs, other forms? This house is cold, cold, ere midwinter's dark, I shall leave it a halfway house between mountain, city, and the desires of the heart, a place tainted already by wickedness and lonely dreams. I hear a kettle boiling on the stove, softening potatoes for a fry. I hear a fire in an iron wood stove, warming my feet from the early snow. Snow hangs on young trees outside, Silent is the white upon the forest. Is there nowhere this body calls home? Somewhere, yes, a distant thing forgot, but never there again shall you go. All newer houses are closed as estranged, for too wild is the world of passion, too draining is the world of love. From many wells I have drunk, from wisdom, from fate, from grief itself. At many oracles I have encanted, and many temples have I sung. For many gods have I danced, for many demons of the summer sun I have waxed and waned in both lust and devotion. Where homeless will this faceless guise read long dark winter? How able will the lights of Beltane await? 
How hungry will this soul be for refreshed eyes? How empty will all days be till then? In mountains have I dwelt, since scant my newborn year. Abroad on plains I trod an aimless wandering. The mountains die before my eyes. I will not remain to watch their death. I will not suffer their usefulness. I will not crave a fairer land, just one where trouble leaves my heart, if only for short, spare times. And weighty memories cease to drag and sadder times are long forgot. Alfheim, Alfheim, I left you for a mortal's sake. Alfheim, Alfheim, I saw your gates, I smelt your breezes. For passing hours I turned aside, I embraced the dust. What fools are dancers when they are near satisfied? What temptations, temptations of fulfillment they throw aside so oft? Yeah, the poet's journey is long and complex, folks. And yeah, the, the gates were open one day, let's just put it that way. And I didn't go through, I embraced the dust. What what that mean by all that was, it remains for me to remain. Is it a secret? No, it's just a telling of something I wrote. Uh, about something. There's a lot like that, you know? I'm looking at some of it. <laughs> How This is, I think, I read Howl already. Howl from the Wilderness, I think I read it. So this is a postscript. It includes a bit from uh, from the Vola Spa, uh, which I'll do in Old Norse and then translate it afterwards. Water. This is um, sometime in the early 80s, so I'm in, my, I'm in my late 20s. I haven't read this in a long time. I Maybe I'm still looking at it at a certain point, but this has all been stashed with my brothers for a long time. I finally got it back. He's right. They were my treasures. He doesn't know by how much they were. Uh, this is a big part of me at the time. Now, where is the top? I got the top on there. See that? What's it say? Oh, I'm on the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Anyway, so... Uh, Christ died so that man might live as he pleases without the weight and burden of divine responsibilities. It was not said by him, Jesus... Joshua ben Mariam of Nazareth, but by those that sought to make profitable use of his death. Too narrow a world, as Yeats said, could it not abide the call of love and simplicity of the heart. If you meet Buddha on the road, kill him. As Nietzsche said, God is dead, for man killed God, his own God, with the shame and shock, the murder of purity, a brother, a son, carried Ah, uh, lament for Balder, who dies only of use of beauty. Lament for Cuchulain, who died for a mistake. Man rebuked his divinity, his own divinity. He seeks to save himself his de with death, not birth. Rape, slaughter, and exploitation, not creation. How methodical is the hatred of the state. How orderly is the enslaving destruction of abstract conspiracy. Science and art fallen to endless, dangerous contrivance and abominations against the earth and the heart. Ideology after ideology, dogma after dogma, quarreling, struggling, seeking order their own way. Order to freeze and cast their own kinds into the mold of what is the time. Bre uh, my pronunciation is awful. Proud Mirbiriosk, Ot Bona Vervosk, Munus Rusigar Sifium Spieler, Hartsmith Holden, Hordomer Mikkel, Skegel, Skalmos, Skildil Klofnir, Windold Vargold, all of Verold Slapis. The world is there for eyes to see it that will, who dare to face the shame and the wild glory that man carves into time and space. Eternity, immortality, man destroys these things, so frantic is he to leave a mark, his mortal mask. And the translation of the bit from the Vola Spa is, the brothers must battle and become uh, each other's bane, brotherly banes. Must sisters 
My sisters incite an incest. Great whoredom, whoredom or mikkel. But I don't think it's just women that's being applied there. Uh, just in terms of uh, licentiousness in general. Uh, uh, sword age, shield age, wind age, wolf age. Until the age, the, all the ages all perish. Yeah, this is the uh, part of the Volus Ball, this is the story of the story of Ragnarok. But now I have this I very profound uh, awakening that 537 to 541 AD was the Fimblevit. Was, was, it must have been 541 AD was when the great battle of Ragnarok had happened, and Volus Ball actually a memory is now of my theory. Anyway, I'll be rejected for that one, I'm sure. Uh, December 21st, 81. So these are all in sequence. I guess I'll read them that way. Uh, waiting for the morrow's eve when the frontiers and roads will open with all the memories of this year dispersed into the distance in the time of dream and blurred images the snows of many ranges traversed leaving the sea in the wet forest and green winter waiting for a too familiar world to pass away new mountains, new basins, new cities, new wilds more things that need to be sought rumble on Tendered guilt solicited up, already forgiven, already understood. An era coils up and retreats, its hour long gone by at last. The leftovers coagulating, stirred, a mix of a thousand tongues yet without shape. Earning rhyme and peace without leaving an open speech and gentle waiting without waiting. earning rhyme and peace with leaving an open speech and gentle waiting without waiting a rock amid the rapids granite in a cold flow shaped by rivers and the rolling stones that grind in the creek bed round and smooth sand and stone and bars here and there there deposited and piled here lifted and spun dizzily in the currents clacking and groaning underneath the splash and the ripple narrow cliffs oozing and dripping the wood high above a stony marsh in the stream a rock shapes the current waiting waiting for the flow strong enough fresh and cold mighty with the spring a brook turned roaring freshet to lift or roll to turn a new side one day to the sea or lake or bigger river or into sand and silt where every grains go at last broken myriad and numberlessly scattered waiting for the morrows ever Biding the collection of resources that guaranteed departure, waiting for a word here, a smile there, waiting for the sky to pale and chill eastward, higher, into the shining south, the mountains and plains, waiting for a world to cool and fall away, a calm subsurface behind a distant war, waiting, waiting, old habits resumed by waiting, waiting. Return? No, never return. For it never is the same again anywhere. Nothing to return to. Nothing to resume. Only memories. Gratitudes and guilts. To grasp and collude. To place before the living present. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is a lesson that you saved a long time. Spring 1984. We all know it's that year. Those of us who remember it. Yeah, Reagan was in power still. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what had happened by then. I know here in BC, all too well, we'd had a really restless 1983 politically near revolution. Well, it pretty much was. And then there was, uh, Bennett talked about using troops. And then the, the newspapers came back in print after a three months long strike, especially to spread the news of, hey, we got two maneuvers of U.S. Marines in Cedar Woolley. I would imagine they actually did because they were already had all the materials showing the whole thing was a communist thing. They're already prepared to do the propaganda move. The U.S. may not have actually had those troops there, but if that was the case, then Pierre Trudeau was okay with it. And this is the same guy that cooperated with with his uh, father-in-law. Yeah, and Jimmy Sinclair was, it was Pierre's father-in-law. Uh, giving Macblow mostly about all the forest sector, all the land from BC, the same percentage of land that had been set aside for First Nations land claims by about 1897 or so. Ah, London walked away and BC said, not our problem, Ottawa, you take it now. No, not our problem, BC, you didn't solve it. No, that one, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 
So they set it aside for what is that? 77 years or something like that? And then boom, all of a sudden it's all cut for timber. Yeah, well, the land claims are already on the table. So that's Canada for you. That's why I hate the Dominion of Canada now. The more I know what was done here in B.C., it makes me all the more raised that the, the Dominion went along with here. Same with a lot of the shit that Campbell did. The Harper was right there right there going along with him, pointing him to London and High Commissioner afterwards. When we wanted to hang the bastard, we wish we did have the death penalty for treason. I think it would be that's we, that should, we should have the death penalty back for that. Public execution. Make his family watch, you know? Like, no, seriously, it's got to be that serious. People have to not ever scam the people. The state is the people, right? Or it's supposed to be. Is it not? No, here, it's the crown. Anyways, I don't want to talk about all that. I'll just read some more of my poetry. But I was like this many years ago. It's just become more acute. And now the reality of the world is I see the natural logic of things is the way it is. Mm, just positioning my hand here. Again, I feel the urge in spring, the tangled briar of childhood dreams, rooted endless breath beneath half-frozen ground, dew and icy mist on yet another season's leave, the lying traceries of light on thorn-twisted vines that bear the black and sour sweet berry fruit. Our summer's moon full, soar full and hot in morning sky silver marshes, herons will have nested, laid out young, Salmon will have swarmed and massed, preparing for death's autumn run. The loon will have filled the questing of its twilight cry. Ever molt springs fulsome change into the sound and sense of red gold fall. Forest hue from green to green and greener still, to hear brilliant with all the surge of life. I remember all my lakeside walks and mind wanderings. Sounding old, the old water mirror as well. I look now into my eyes and see the deeper lines. The fuller sag and crack of yet another winter's lee. I feel my skin. I feel its stony crease. And cry for touch to put away the aching. To burn away the shadows of the urgent spring. That's spring 1984. I think that was... I must have been back at Ruskin. I'm sure that was Hayward Lake I'm referring to. The old Watermere's Will. I know where I'm talking about. My lake, so I'd walk. So I'd go up behind the dam. The lake was formed in, in 30, but it has this beautiful sort of dead forest. Is it beautiful, a dead forest? I suppose in its own way it is. It's really not. Oh, just before I had my tooth infection. Oh, do it do i want to do it oh 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 no it's huge memories they're going to summon that one they're going to do a special reading like the volcano that's called throwing stones and glass houses there have a look at it and uh, you can slow it down read it if you want and you can read yourself i don't want to read it right now to, to manifest it you know to demonstrate it that means in french manifest it and i don't know i should translate these into french just for fun <laughs> I wouldn't be very good verse, but I don't know. It's worth translating, and I'm grateful to uh, VGA uh, Lazar, uh, uh, VGA Spox, or whatever her late name is on uh, Lazar, uh, who is uh, Spanish or uh, Hispanic of some kind and wants to translate my stuff into Spanish. I'm grateful for that. Uh, I'm thinking of doing maybe the French I could try myself. But anyways, okay, this is uh, <clears throat> titled... A title came after, as often happens after I've typed something out, it's like, okay, this is what this is named. But after I typed it out, I draw on these oars. I drag again the heavy oak with a hard back. I am blind. Deaf, mute. Am I alone? On this ship? Is the sea black? Where is the sun? Is there ice on the waters? For I am cold. 
Is the water on my skin, sea, rain, or tears? Am I aground? Or is the wind in unseen sails? What language is this I speak? Are these ideas? Are there beaches in the mind to dock this much journeyed ship on? Will the horizon yield to this sightless soul an end without death? My hands hurt. My heart heaves. The callus is blister. And the back is twisted rough. Is that a cold shadow on my neck? Or just a dark giant of winter warning? I'm hungry and I do not know food. I am thirsty, but sea and tears are salt and bitter. I am cold, but my fur is wet. I am alone, save for my endless thoughts. And what do I row? What force resists my pull? Am I on course? Which course? Is there another heart? near mine in this strange dark? Am I alive or dead? Is there a difference? I feel the ship creak. Wood moans in the waves. The throb of the sea lurches my guts. I am dizzy with fatigue. And I feel a maelstrom in the depths. The storm is vicious and strange. The ship groans and pitches in the gloom. I should add that I've been reading a lot of Kafka. <laughs> That's very Kafkaesque, actually. But yeah, it's a parable, of course. <clears throat> I did this already. Um, this goes in my... Uh, yeah. And that I've been already. Uh, I'm putting, making different stacks and sorting as I go. Ooh. <clears throat> yeah, so the date of that thing I read, drinking coffee in the summer wine. Let me do it again, because it's important to do this right now because of the situation in the country. So this is... Uh, Brian Mulroney was on the throne, but it was Claude Ryan, Quebec security minister, who pulled this bullshit. It's always the provincial governments. Even now, Horgan should be held to task, just like Trudeau, for the war crimes against the Wet'suwet'en nation which seriously, there are crimes against humanity and against UN resolutions. And I'm, I'm upset more Canadians aren't as upset as I am, that more non-native Canadians aren't as upset. Anyways, anyways, first they came for the Wet'suwet'en and then so on. Drinking coffee and the summer wine. Evening city promenades, boulevards and bicycles. Thinking of the war and what now must be. These are the streets of all our kind. This is the land on which we walk. Bright cafes, pastry bars, the leisure of the street, shops and eyes and food and lust. What do we need of war? What could we want of state? On this spot, great trees once stood. Dark groves, green glades below, blue life-boiling sea. The forests are gone. Their ghosts are city's bones. We stand on their ground. We walk on their hearts. They stand on our ground. They walk on our hearts. The vote and its sword march on our soil, tear up our world, make truth into lies to feed to the crowd. We make our hearts ready. We are free when we die. The city awaits this autumn storm. The mountains fill with dread. The north wind howls of winter's might. The land awaits the dead. September 2nd, 1990, Starbucks, Thurlow and Robson, the one on the, uh, the new one, on the corner towards downtown. And this was the night before the Canadian armies advanced on Kahnawake, Kahnawake, and Oka. Oh, Kahnawake is Oka. 
And this isn't about what happened that same summer in Seton Porridge. There's another Canadian, Canadian military action that the world doesn't know about because you're not told about it because our media is very good at making it all seem normal. It's okay to do this Indians here, you see, so there's nothing wrong with it. It's all legal shit that they're doing because it's not legal at all. And they just don't want the world to know. So, I don't know, I guess it's I'm part of my job. Is it my job? Yeah, I guess. Truth teller, as I said, Heidi, my neighbor. This is about where we're from, where, where we lived, Bridge River. It's part of South Shalash, South Shalash One Indian Reserve, the, 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 the Bull family orchard. is where our house was next to. It was in a switchyard and pen stocks and all kinds of things. But, ah, the Bull family, I think they got pretty good settlement for them. I think, I don't know, I should ask Nathan. I think he's a bull. They're from Slush, which is Slush. To a hot, dusty orchard strewn with thickets of the long bird grass. The feeder bid thither, vistaed above the turquoise snake, the waters of Seton's Lake. The eyes are brimmed with ancient wind. The eyes beholding the rock, the eyes behold the great arms of the secret dale, deep, deep in the mountain's folds. Forest chorus, the pines in that ancient wind around the twisting screes. Far booms the echo of the heroic thunderwire, the shadows of titanic fire. This valley, banned to go, and lost, scarred by the descent of those booted feet that wander past the, unswatt- the sun-swaddled village to a hot, dusty orchard strewn with thickets of the long brood gla- brood bird grass far below the gale-tossed alpine at the end of the high climb that calls the crest of mountain ridge pined and spruce to fall away into the childhood past and the clatter of the echoes from the roadbed as the flat car winds beside the towered lake back to the weeds at the end of the trail the hellhole town in summer back to the ways where we shall pass again to a hot dusty orchard and the long bird grass yeah, I caught the train back overnight from being in the portage for the day. And I kind of about that whole area. The music of stones, but turned to wind. We empty our souls into the tones that command us. Ride the love of melody as it caresses our, our experience, rhythms embracing the heat of life and subduing the tempest to a dance. Longing turned to knowing, memory into being, past moving into a future through a present we can pawn only after it is, long, after it is gone. Music only once, echoing in all the moments of eternity, resonant in all the crystal light of space and time. Only once need it be, only a sound for its own shape and like no other. It passes out of us, making room for new hearts, new chords. Our souls are prism for the muses, ever-changing light. We are cleansed, our souls united to our flesh. Yeah, I guess you could say I'm a musicologist, I guess, in terms of being a kind of philosopher, a musicologist. And to dare to be what you are is to invite the surest barb to risk exposure to the searing scorch of mortal gall. Truth used is evil weapon, shot to hurt, dear trust and stymie all earnest toil. The world is wide, and the panoplies of time and fate hold wonders of dreamt of, whose tales will never grace so small hearts as yours. Read me well, for I am only vessel of the ages, mirror of your own hidden angers. Ha. Uh, Servant to your lovelessness and anguish, I will hold, hold your secrets no more, save, save to sharpen them for their hatching's day. Mm. Might as well do this when it goes with that one. Six black looks and madness like a broken window pane, sharp and bloody. What was that face, that mind I glimpsed into the violence of my seventh glance? Before all knowing was crushed in the lowered boom of real reality, when all I could hear say or feel was made out to be banality, I lost my sheaf, all I'd ever write, on a day furious with movings and deep flowing wonders, left perhaps on a strange car hood or in a house abandoned to a greedy landlord or in the swirl of mindless thievery that was trait of those I had fallen in with and to. But it is unmade, for I am no more what's wrote or sought by eloquence or arrest of turns of phrase. All now must be wrought anew without foil of legacy or taint of inheritance. Tarnished glories echoed by a fitful rage, grasping at what I have not done and can do no more. To write these days be thought a fool, dreaming in a public place. 
when all that matters is cold, hard gold, all humor, the proficiency of skilled, wanton sex. To write? Is that what thinking, feeling, striving is? A craft to gain applause or grants and not a life lived bold? It seems but shamelessly, instead of deeds, look, look herein and see my soul spin on its point. Mock my honesty if you must or will, for the weakness you know it to be. Tell lies about the truth and you will be set free. From all values, from love, from the knowing of eternity, but you will have your pride and be paid full price of it. Well dressed but artless, this my home city in its sheltered bay. Is this my own accursed Dublin or fevered, fevering Rome? Are these rainy, rainy avenues the secret crypts of my mortality zone, Golgotha? Its subarctic beaches, the cradle board to my hunger? Oh, strike me when I dare say such things. Tell me, greatness is no more, that all the gods and all poesy are dead. Does that make me wonder less? Does it make my tears run false or vain, my laughter's happiness only cheap delusion, ringing hollow, unless your judgment allows me to breathe my own breath? But to choke on the body bloody spittle of my tortured own tortured lungs you would chain my heart with a shortened bed of your own limitations within the limitation of your prejudices the small realm you take pomp and having courage to know to pass cold on all else beyond us without cause as beyond as without cause or meaning or use who taught you smile so mean as though you'd kicked a crying child are you my Mephistopheles to teach me that, that to be damned is to have been saved? Is it only you believe, you know, you hope that you will free yourself from hell by tainting innocence with the contagion of your sins, laughing as they fall beneath the weight of your corruption, giddying their faith and surety with, with your insubstantiability? Fire has a name, and light is its shadow. Ashes, all lies shall, shall be even as poetry is but chaff upon dear heaven's wind, bare husks of vital knowings reaped from the grain of God and nature. The flames of time shall consume untruth. All evil rot shall be burned away. Bitter rest to oneself are the cruel jests of hatred that play as love. There must be God to have sanctioned sentiment for beauty and susceptibility to pain, vulnerability to deceit as only pitiful insanities. There is no human eye alive could recognize the value of a poet's curse or save or hoard the lost scribblings of a spited maniac distinguished from among the tawdry refuse and rich garbages of these crossful times. I would tell you more, but yours have made deaf and all my reasons spoilt. Our destinies are already made. Last night was our destiny is already made. I'm, I, I'm left, I, I mean, it's a poetic thing. You leave out the other, the last verb. Oh, the Royal Enconium. <laughs> Not right now. I'm going to do that one properly. I already sent it to His Royal Highness, but finally, after when I should have sent it just before William was born, but yeah, it was a very long time ago. He was already new. Travel Too Far. The trilogy. I read some of this one the other night. I uh, won't do it again now. I'm just sorting through stuff, right? See what else I see. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yep, I'm just, I just read that one already. Uh, no, I'll save that one. I'll save that one. As long as I'll just save, I know, I know I'll do again. Uh, maybe I'm looking for things, kind of. To those who are offended by my words, or cannot hear them because of my prior because of prior judgments, let me say this: that to be unjustly accused of perfidy is one of the evilest things that can befall a man. To be the unknown and deliberate victim of another's perfidy, thus even more painful, more so when your own honor forbids the revelation of that injury, even to your friend, when one desires to hurt no longer, having already once caused hurt, while seeking to remedy one's own silence is the only recourse. Despair to be cured, only in oblivion. Uh, surprisingly, that was a long time before a certain thing you might think it was about, you know, something else about something else. But no, this is... Uh, I think this had to do with me being accused of stealing from the uh, the, 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 the Children's Festival. I'd love somebody in charge of the rocks. If they stole something, I guess who gets blamed for it. Well, I, wasn't, I should have been more attentive, you know? 
I wasn't there all day, so I left somebody else in charge of it. Well, what happens if you delegate authority? Somebody else will take it, blame it on you. This refers to uh, a longer thing I didn't read. Um, all these symbols and comments in it. Symbols? I don't know. A shadow on the wall, window, mirror, both opaque. A gong resounds. Whose hammer? Which dwarf? A way is open. Which wall? And whose? A fog lingers after the storm. It is only the wind will blow a shadow of the wall. The heart is horned. The horn wails from heart. The wood is empty. The hunt is over. The wood is empty. The hunt is abandoned. A stag roams free. There are clear pools in the glade. I'll do magpie another day. Ah, uh, the poesy, I guess this is, is when you, is that what it is when you, you write about poetics, I guess. This is a tirade, tirade, however you want to say it. Poetic success, poetic achievement, and poetic credentials, alongside the qualitative paraphernalia of the other arts, i.e. capital A-R-T, do not come cheap. Numbers of books and titles published, earnings, sales records, Critical receptions and adulations, degrees and diplomas, fame and fashion have very little to do with the quality of a poet and his work. As we dare use such a word as quality at all in this regard. Success, achievement and credentials, these are the actual poetry of a poet, which is poetry first and last, and not a career or citation. They are a life. More important by far is the matter of what is being said, of the integrity of how and why it is being said. Not, nor rue poet, not sure what I meant there, can, a type of thing, can ever declare that whatever he does shares all by right quality because he has a recognition of some sort of credential or worst of all, a reputation. And thus expect that he, she be lauded for his, her work. There is a conundrum to this because such good work goes totally unrecognized, undistributed, even unpublished. The poet is written for his own sake in such instances and for the sake of what he wishes to express and or speak of. He wishes to express it, not seek profit or powers or glory from it. These latter are the cheap dreams of mercenaries and charlatans. Should he ever write for the sake of poetry, for the sake of his name, or conceit as a poet, then he has distorted the flame and cast a shadow upon the tongue. It is amidst the process such abusive scarring that poetry, once a great facet of human character and civilization, has sunk to ignominy, neglect, and oafish posturing in the course of the last century or two. This is because art became recognized as a path to historical greatness, convincing many of the vain and opportunists are to make their mark there, and an ugly bruise it is indeed. The poets of the Homeric lines, Gilgamesh and Beowulf, knew no, knew no university degrees. The troubadours and minstrels knew no publication, save cherished duplication, a uh, word of mouth re- replication. The great men of poetry of classical and medieval renaissance and more knew no no, nothing of state institutionalized of the arts and dilettantish critical establishment, institutionalization of the arts and dilettantish critical establishment. There was no doubt a question of the essential integrity of the poet through and poetic dedications vocation. Many of those presently recognized or established under the current system, artificers of inauspicious formal niceties and... Uh, uh, exciting, experimental, provocative material, um, as material in the sense of material uh, armaments, a uh, material, you know, and armaments will be forgotten as the versifiers and psychophantic society of artists of the last century, who at last themselves were more earnest of their cause, more honest in their dedication to elevate their hearts and minds from the trappings of being bourgeois. The attitude now, of course, is quite the opposite. Yeah, I'm speaking of the Canada Council system and the grant system. Even now, I mean, I, I'm on disability when I could have been on cultural funding all these years. But what would have made me? It would have made me a, a, a state 
but we have Canada Council and CRTC, and yeah, it's a tough market for commercial market because of the way things are. Ah, this is long, but it's pretty interesting. Rulers of a shocking lie. A lie of gluttony as growth. A lie of lust as life. A lie of truth is true. A lie of dream is real. A lie of mind, of tongues. A lie of wealth, a war. A lie of rot, of rage. A lie of new, of old. A lie of change. A lie, a static nothing, strange. A lie of love, of deceit. A lie of lies. Uh, I've got to find the stanzas that go with that. Four stanzas. I'll have to find them. I know there goes something there that I really, that's really interesting. But where are the other pages? Like, I've got another one saved here. Mm. More writings from the woods, basically. The cold woods coming back to Canada from Mexico quite disastrously. That's really what that thing in the winter. And then, I think that was a Brio cabin, which was Jean Francois's place that got burned out. Is this the end of something or just a fragment? I think it's just a fragment. I'll read it. The unknown realms of night are part and party to the city light. Shadow and shelter of the bright day. Breaking forms of time opening up the trousseau of waking dream. All night the dawn is darkened until the sun is burst upon the eve of sleep. Yeah, that's nice. Ooh, what have I got here? Ooh. Oh, why not? Why not? Okay. Ah, I wonder where I was with this. I kind of know exactly the era, the week this was in, but had I made it to, to Lillooet, I don't remember. I don't know about a Whistler a certain morning. This was, I think, that day, but it doesn't, it's not dated. It probably is on the original manuscript. Frozen hands, ungloved, and held above the touch, speechless, Without a course, yet urged to move. The cold unwarm of type. The touch turned hammer. The keys turned brand. But with such a fire that cast no light, why carry it to see the way? That flame is cold. Something wants a saying, but will not name its plot. There are other things I ought to get about with saying. Mixtures of my childhood's mountains, mazes in the city hearts, and darkness in the fiery streets. Pictures of what ifs and never was that cloak the light, desire to live in comfort last. The dry frost of the Cayuche wind, romance on the beach, in glade, canyons of the wayward road, bending, high palaces, fine chariots, great journeys, and a horde. Did I ride the dragon's age? I ending? This is a different spring. It leads my hands astray from toil for sustenance. But these are unfamiliar roads, and the wind is cold. My hands are chill, and would be mute. Then risk the temper of an eldritch fire. Eldritch meaning sort of 
darkly magical. <laughs> yeah, I can't help the mysticism. It's part of what I'm about, and that's why people don't understand me and scared of me, I guess. Reality, I'm the crazy man of the woods, for sure. So as all these long years are at last filled, the sunset's light growing as the darkness dawns. I saw your face in the clouds one day. It seemed to me you dreamt and knew not where you were, whence you came, or whence to go. The wind dispersed your visage. The fire spoke to me. I heard the word sing, scorched by the flames of cruel, empty love. Did you hear my heartbeat in that thunder? My eyes as the lightning flashed amid a mountain snowstorm, the gale whipping tongues of ice into the crannies of our bones. The forest falls. Can you hear it? Snow trembling on my cabin's cornice, shaking the roof to rattle and sliding off with a chilling thud. The weight of your past upon me falls thus. I am gone from the dark groves wherein you cast your spells about me. I will grieve your love no more. Well, that's the second time I read that today. I just felt like doing it again. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of this stuff I'm repeating now. It's all the same folder. Is there anything else in here? No. Uh, uh, let's do this one. Uh, doing this one special for John O'Hara again. Uh, this is one of the original type outs of this. This is the Bards of Babylon, which Dick Sullivan was my classics humanities prof, actually, humanities 101 or whatever. Uh, Dick's an interesting guy about him another time, but he commented on the first two lines that were in part of a larger kind of elegy kind of thing, this opening two lines. He says, that's really good. So I sat down and just let it happen. And this came out. And they came out, and I was scribbling along the bus, and crouched down on my, it was ringing through my head. I crouched down on Lower Davy Street, down between Homer and Richards. I can feel the spot. I know exactly where it was. Crouched down in the late rain. I'm getting this done, and the bus goes by and breaks my concentration after the fourth verse. And there's other summonings of this again. I just had some water, and uh, maybe the truck came in just now for my propane. That would be really cool. But anyways, I love my little cabin in the mountains, and this is where a permit should be doing what I exactly what I'm doing now. For posterity and for the community that's never heard me before ever, because it's hard to get published in this country, and a guy like me isn't organized to kiss the ass and get it done, you know? It's not done like that for guys like me. Nope. So I'm just who I am. I'm reading it for you. So uh, I'll just do this and uh, hold that like that. Hope that's good. The Bards of Babylon, the Harps of Ur, Great Gallery of Nineveh's lore, 10,000 years of human stir, let many lights, extinguished more. The fires that burned on Uruk's heights were like the glory of its kingly throne. The beasts that burned the mountain nights consumed the dark where earth had dwelt alone. Names and hearts Unwrit, uncarved, are the grains on fortune's grinding wheel. This gristmill's flour baked bread that starved, made longing taste like sweet, rich meal. Vanished is the green and fertile earth. Vanished are Sumer's youthful lords. Dwindled is the wide world's girth. Dwindled are the nomad hordes. Great Nineveh, a broken fragment is. Young Alexandria, just shriveled ash. Far-famed heroes, songs and cities are blasted into nameless dust. Fragmented Nineveh is buried beneath the rock of time. Alexandria's ashes, warm with Roman fire, reduced to rhyme. Uh, the, the last bits were added on. This was a later type up. That first bit was added to the Great Nineveh that's preferring the, 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 uh, there was more coming about the loss of ancient knowledge through destruction by war and just fire and fate and like I had my family destroy things too and lost things, deleted things nope, that's a personal letter it starts off with a with a poem which I might consider doing separately so that's got to go there for now I 
I have traveled too far. None could follow my path, nor could I describe its trace. Dim and disfigured, shapes of my origin swarm amid the shadows of the road. No orientation could be made from their tracings. Too much has sundered their form. And where ahead? I could see the land, but none would believe my view if it could be told. Grand events that could only that could sway are laid across the hills of time like ramparts to a citadel discovered in the waste where none had ever been foreseen to stand. The toil of living exhausts my breath. I cannot foretell strong enough to show my case. I cannot dance pleasingly enough to beg for food for my famished soul. And that my friends, who they see me to be, I no longer care to understand, else I should care to so become. Great gulfs of consciousness, our private anguishes and urges, pleasures and desires, divide us as continents separated by a nameless sea and by the fiery will of the bowels of our earth. I would love, but there is none who could withstand my ardor and the causing of its legacy. On and on, without respite, the thankless journey forebodes bodes my feet. No reward or cause drags me thither. No lashes of a soiled past drive me on to no point in refusal in cessation that has been shown to be other than a trick in the wendings of this track. I look out into the winter night and cannot find any solid reason for my pain. I think that might have been li- when I was living in uh, in uh, Buddy's place out in Emerald Estates. Huh. Rory. God, I, I got to make up with Rory. Something happened. To dream of honor, to yearn for glory... What have we made that will last, that will see us endure and prosper? Not for death, no, and not for death's longing, but for the years of fulsomeness, for the pleasure of a man's living life, a gracious home, good land, find children and a lover to nurture our pain of toil and to give us joy in the long northern night. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> Boreal water part. Oh. Politics, politics, politics. Might as well do it then. Politics, politics, politics. Many ticks. Exegesis, an elegy. The watershed of all years has passed through my eyes. Again. Again. Was it again? What do I remember that I did not know before? What else do I remember that I have not known yet? My years, your years, our years, all years. The world is dying. I have seen that. We have all seen that. And we are its death. When I go from here and I go alone into the great wild, I go a free man. We are all free men. We And should we choose to be free, there is no king, no government, no power could defeat us. Would if we deem to defeat, to defy them first. How many of us would rise? How many would even heed that final call to vanquish evil from this, our world? Are we enough for that? Do you doubt that a few could overrule the many? Has this already been put to task and belabored over and over again? again? And the gods shall all have died, it was said of the final days in ancient time. By the cities shall ye know them. So what of it? What Tom of you would stand up and speak forth his own in truth and justice? for dare to name the sins of the world and bear witness to their event and doom. Pride, pride, O mine eyes, the vision of years, a mock of all that can never have been. To dare the naming I have over here and an alternate name for Man Jack, but no, Thomas Paine, of course, the great American revolutionary. Yeah, I'm much more inspired by the American uh, Fathers of the Union than I am by any of the Fathers of fucking Confederation, that's for fucking sure. 
You know? So, yeah, I'm a radical and politicized poet now. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that one for sure. I'm laughing at some of the stuff I find because they're like, yeah, I'm laying out I'm laying out the bones of my heart, but there's some of them are all pretty interesting, you know? Those I've read already today. Uh, the world has many whips. I entertain myself with fantasies of that might that of what might be made. I'll start over that. The world has many whips. I entertain myself with fantasies of what might be made to be, to shield me from the stinging lash, driving me on with the spur into these hurtling ages. The pain of knowing is the worst of all. To speak of love is to bring down its curse. To speak of hate is to bear love's scars. Soft, consorted caresses, oiled eyes, drawn, drawing, a grammarless body spread beneath the witch of never night and on the passion-blasted bed of ever black. Close the doors on this chamber. The intrusions fall heedless of the entwined, wrapped nonsense of the witch of never night and the passion blasted bed of ever black. Yeah, the, it's like my songs, they come in different flavors, you know, different categories. Uh, I read that last night. Uh, that goes with the science fiction pile. I'm sorting as I go, okay? So that's that pile. And that's that stuff there. I'll select that. I'm about to drop all this stuff. I better stop this, but that's been fun, right? Eh? Uh, well, I will quickly have a click here and see if I quickly spot anything else I want to do. I should, eh, since I'm talking about it. That I think is part of uh, part of the, the dark giant. I got to check. Uh, I don't want to do it by itself, kind of is why. Science fiction, science fiction, science fiction. There's things I'm looking for, manuscript stuff I'm looking for. Uh, there's something there, what was that? Mm, okay. Pull that little sack out, pull this little bunch of shit out here. Just seeing how much of this there is. No, no, it's just a short story. actually photographed these before they're long this typed out kind of stream of consciousness hippie poetry worth doing but as a separate day some of my song things here Udo uh, I don't know they're just songs I have to think of what they are again eh? I'll take a photo separately All right, all right. Yeah, I'm gonna do this up. Uh, Latin is uh, the, La the Latin motto of British Columbia is "Splendor sine occasu," which means "splendor without eclipse." Usually rendered into English as "splendor undiminished," but I, I've adjusted this title, although it's not put here that way, as "Splendor occasu." Right. Splendor or Kazu, which means splendor diminished. It's still beautiful, but it's not what it was, that's for sure. Anyways. Yeah, some of the, I want to read some of the personal stuff, but not right now. Um, that's I can read the neutral. Uh, I had a, a science fiction series and a big epic going on. That was that thing with the Saurians. Ah, uh, the vast range. The bone of the Lord stretch away northwest like the forearm of a titan some 80, 80 leagues. 
Taras fell before its last height, before the hack of the blood cut itself, where the first one fell and was hewn into the land. Yeah, landscape I invent in mythology as I go, I'll create them. I'm a I world make worlds, yeah, but what do you call it? A world maker, you know, like a uh, slaughter Bart Childs in the Hitchhiker's Guide. Armin had planted the fourth world in the fifth galaxies, four worlds in the fifth galaxies. Ah, uh, creation was the work of God. But God is dead by man's unnatural act. For beauty is waste. The wheel and the rod have slain nature's wild and glorious fact. Shining mountains ring in green and gold, bright ice, steep rock, round valleys old. Through the canyons deep, swift rivers flow down to the sea, down from the snow. But here, let beauty's loyals hold an enclave against life's cruel rape, humanity and earth unsold, a jewel amidst an evil jape. Shining mountains ring in green and gold, bright ice, steep rock, round valleys old. Through the canyons deep, swift rivers flow down to the sea, down from the snow. Let splendor rule the heart of man. Let the high wilderness reflourish. Let fortune favor this errant hand, nature's eyes and hearts to nourish. Shining mountains ring in green and gold, bright ice, steep rock, round valleys old. Through the canyons deep, Swift rivers flow down to the sea, down from the snow. Beauty cannot rest in song. Go look upon the fair green earth. Tell me if you see no wrong. Dare behold the truth for what it's worth. Shining mountains ring in green and gold. Bright ice, steep rock, round valleys old. Through the canyons deep, swift rivers flow down to the sea down from the snow. In memoriam, <laughs> what used to be British Columbia when I was young, what used to be beautiful, beautiful British Columbia and is no more beautiful like it was. It's still beautiful, but it's nothing like it was. And you law more the tale of Anna Diana, the Rhapsodic Trio. Uh, I get interesting on that stuff. Was I writing on acid? No, my mind was already there by out of the time I tried acid. Oh, okay. I went, oh, okay. I've been here before. Uh, I think I was that way since a kid. Um, uh, the lay of Upsila, Ansal. What else is in here? Uh, okay. Uh, laughing at the things I see. And okay, let's read that one. There we go. That's what I wanted there. Short things out in a second. In the New Republic, then, it would be made out there would be no poets, that poetry be bad and that only academic philosophers would be let illumine public culture. Hence the vulgar excesses of Freudianism, turning in myths into mere schizophrenic bathos, passion into repressed sexuality, gods into the geniuses of sexual frustration and parental inhibition, the bland and horrifying emptiness of a purely physical cosmos, where the metaphysical is outlawed from, quote, scientific, unquote, investigation, or is tossed aside as, quote, spurious imaginations, unquote, or, quote, antique superstition, unquote, is the tepid implication of the more analytic cults of reason. So how odd that the gift of poetry would be the last choked by the muscle of the plebeian masses who inherited the reins of state when the high-born at last fell, that raw ignorance would determine the survival of words and ideas, and the shards of sensualized beauty that survive amid the wreckage of their once pure vessels go ignored. And poets perforce must turn to prose in search of clear expression of the poetic state, a poetic revelation, of the gift of spoke and the gift of spoken knowledge, so that at least a few might hear. Yeah, that was sometime in the early '80s as I was getting over everything before my well, before after my oral surgery, I think, for the first time. <laughs> Science fiction again, kinda. Yeah, it is. Uh, 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 too much fun here going through this. I should end this, but I just want to find you something else to do before I go here. I'm finding fun stuff, but the science fiction stuff all takes a while to read, you see. A lot of that's in this pile, but there's occasional bits of it, you know, um, that are worth uh,
Runner, runner, in the night, let the darkness clear the sight. It withered one hot summer's day and hid in fear for far away. Dark, dark world, not built from dreams, dreams of the past, dreams of the future, the present wished and hoped. Storm, storm, turbulent cloud, honesty, pride and faith, thought apart and cruel time failed the autumn heart. This is a nightmare place. A rig bed corridor of vaults and groins and webbed shadows full of waiting fears. How did I wander in so easily from the calm terraces of spring nights? This is not a place to explore the passages, endless and always distracting, further and further lost within these angered walls. Which gods is this house? What name has this tower that seals from the free night a vista of stars and mountains and pleasant roads? Abandon hope at the gate for fate as a double edge, and the pit lies within the heart, a dungeon deep within the mind where the soul need never be trapped, except reduced by its own shadows, cast upon the rocks, cast upon the waters, cast from the heights, cast from the depths. I have been here before. These catacombs of pain and gloom lie everywhere beneath my living world. Climb out again to rest beneath the clear sky and keep well about and gather strength instead of spend. The entrances cannot be sealed, but only be seen to avoid until one can destroy this hollow cancer of the spirit that lies in dreams and fears by finding the root of this deep castle that undermines the fertile world. Every time I walk beneath my passage carves new haunted hills and collapses the ground above. And that's actually a reference to, to this poem here, Runner Part 2. Running alone through world bend wood upon the bottomless world below, hoof-pounding rumble on the hard dirt track, too much wild joy to be only one by the gulf at high cragged world's end edge and need not seek below on the lower roads that run underneath on darker older ways and fill the strongest to grief and fear and drunk with the waters of forgetfulness that blur with the wind of tears to fill with him the glades deep in the night to obscure the high star song and strike out sight and now once away from these dark caverns of pain changing through dancing the dancing pace the magic rain wets a main gray and gold upon twilight shade and the glistening rocks of the crumbling ruins of that ancient world runner real wild and see only the sky and the forest running flying through world main wood and beasts too chorusing ravening smad apart in a patient frenzy to find the bridge of ice cold night that has not yet been shattered by the ancient rumble of hooves that bore no riders only sad giants into the old night and into the void of dark, dark and beautiful and empty and timeless, without any marked engraven stain upon that mighty rock called chaos that has no form or shape except the wild-swept wave of the horizon of eternity, the stone-carven curses washed away with and into the blackness of infinite night, running, running through world bane wood, runner, run wild, run, run around the high bridge away from world bane wood that arches above its name, Nothing this night into the dark beyond without light driven form by shadow of rot or snag or rut or snag and reel around the corner and into the void and scream with the passion of the great true wild. World Bane Wood Runner, run, run. World Bane Wood Runners, run, run. Freedom, endless, wild, wild, rock, stone, reach higher, high, high. The elf song sings sadly, yet higher. Sigh. Sigh. And there's actually, there is that, uh, one of my other uh, poems from his world being wood is Two Horses Korean and the Golden Mane with Silver Shanks. Uh, the Silver Horse with Gold Mane's Shanks, whatever it was. There's different, different, uh, two different horses on World's, world's End Edge. And that's a suite of seven poems that came at the end of uh, the Volcano Materials. That's sort of postscript to it. 
a lot of my materials for the next year or two after that relate to that. As is this. I'm the mad dance reels on rocky, bouldered beach by the gulf and the failing sunset of those dark, hidden fires deep below. Shaggy, unkempt, in wild, sad dignity. Beard ragged, crevices carved and old, washes away within the cold waters of the void, consumed with brace by the mighty, ancient, windslept head. Callous, hopeless, but careless and free upon the rocks, dancing madly in massless joy. The dark green rove of gale-stunted bulls, the heath only half-treed, mute and lush, observes what only blind silence can see, and shuddered words lie in rubble, and the furious glee, the unseen song, torning out the mad, spirited dance to celebrate the end of the mind. Sing, mountain, sharp into the dark sky, give flight to your agonies and release, and empty your crypts into the winds, blackening and storm that gather above the human mortal worlds. Giant, giant, mighty stone, great, untouched by the gross hordes of lesser fates. Unknown song choruses in roared hymn, rushing up in the deep, ever-deep throated gulch, awesome as the will of the void, fate, fate canticle and mighty, silence, emptiness, night, nothingness, neither north, east, south, nor west, nullus, nemine, nihil est, horror not hidden, not secret, but forgotten and broken in formless heap of abandoned waste. The Latin is a line from the is from the mass of excommunication. Uh, nothing, no one, uh, nobody is. Nullus nemine nihil est. I'm not sure. It's the bell book and can. It's close stuff. The bell book, the candle thing. You know. Uh, beneath the frozen fires of the winter night in the distant south, beyond the monstered sea, build that mighty temple in rejection of the great battles that ravage the middle land. The formless leagues were shaped by time and the glaring blizzard of blinding light. The dark band arches beneath and the wind, swirling wild in the darkened, wallless hall, and the gates are will and the never well. Chill gardens dusted with the starry night, cold misted passion and the ring of blue flame. The ramparts made for frozen night and winter fire. Erupting chaos, hammer louder than those sad tones, Thundering change, smoothing even enduring stone, a vortex flares with crushing night. High words call for the song of might. The boundless, eternal gorge draws the hymn and darkness groan, the titan shadows in twilight dim. Join the abyss, walk the wild forest, bear the dark mountains, hear the dark mountains, the stone sky in chorus. Join the abyss, walk the wild forest, hear the dark mountains, the stone sky in chorus. Dark hero, hero, grimace grim and glooming, glare into the ancient night of storm, furies raging in the blackness. See, because all the Greek tragedies are the guys have wrought their own doom. The furies, of course, figure in many of them, like Oedipus being dragged into the earth by them. I speak ill of the, the blessed ones, the humanities, the blessed coming. Oh, the blessed, yeah, the blessed ones is what that humanities means, amenities, and modern Greek, more or less. The mountain of fire burns with anger, old, deep within its icy cloak, vents of hot agony seep from the crackling slopes, poison air clouds, the air clean air breeze. When? When will this inner heart be loosed from its ancient prism? Uh, Mount St. Helens had fallen silent, you see. I'm not sure which way I'm supposed to go, where that one's supposed to fit, the one at the bottom. I'll just do it as it's typed out, but that maybe is supposed to be switched. I think I, that's a note to myself, but I won't read it that way. Let us rest. The restless earth rumbles and heaves beneath. 
the dark fire of sound that burns unseen, thundering flame, graces the night with somber cannon, the rocks and barrens groan into the folds of eternal shade, the doom drum sings. Stand high upon heaven crag and look down upon the world, icy distances blur, molten and warm, rock fangs scarring the bitter snow, look across, beyond the boiling clouds, the churning of nightmare sea. In the jetsam of these latter days, yet you cannot defer chance. This transparent skull soars thick and blue, carven with a mortal knife forever, and scarred by the blade of little earth, madly worrying its open gate, furies screaming in, the night, in its night glare into the endless void, glare upon the endless void. The terrible fire waiting in the spiral below, festers the toiling rocks to spew hot life into the dark. Masses in unison are lonely in the emptiness, but mountains and stars see the slow, grand glory, the beauty of the endless wild. Black sun of thunder blasts the stars out of the night with wind into the endless void. On the eternal wasteland heaps a rock pile walked only by the darkness where sits the ruined throne of the ancient Lord of Doom. A giant in the northern place rolls and turns alive, feels its axe-hewn corpse drunk with black milk from the pitchy night of the darkened gap, which is born unto itself, as always and never, burning, burning. The houses of heaven plunge into the pit, into the cold, dark well, deep-seated and emptier than ever, Alone and sweet, dear night, into the deepest deeps, great never. Ice, darkness, stone. O oh, singers of these songs, the heart of time itself is empty. The mountain sings, and silence roars, the warm majesty of the summer night, the cold beauty of the winter light. And that's, of course, Ymir, the skull, and so on, and, and the giant in the northern place is being hacked, and so on. Void the ancient night of darkness. Beyond the cathedrals of shadow, fear does not walk the chaos way, monsters the strange land. The night is calm and heaving, wind dreaming sleep in the dark mind, our primal star to fill the gloom, with forgotten blackness and the eternity called never. In the distant years blows a storm unending, emptiness besieging, frantic worrying, tarnished hides and light blinded eyes. Tears overflowing the giant well, passion pouring forth to fill with the stark beauty of nothing. Dance in dark, wet and wild, nothing before the shadowed waters. Cold, crystal gray, starlit fog swirls elixir in the breeze and chasms fold beneath the night. Fear never, never fear, feasting night, flaming fury, molten heart. Hammer world, thunder might, flaming world, molten might, hammer fury, thunder heart. Void the ancient night. The endless dark. Snow falls upon the silent hills and the white echo of the forests, blinding shadow and the dark waters. Another age's winter blows tenderly with a cool spell of fresh peace. Soft, cold, and sweet still, timeless as winter's eve, magic fire and bright palaces of crystal gleam and cascading ice flash the windows of the cold, hard world and the gentle chilling grace and calm. The night and day are still and poised as twilight glows with flicker flame as snow falls softly cold upon the silent hills and the heart of the wild. The forest filling echo white. The mountains rear slow from the frozen lowland shore palisades of falling gardens. White flowers rising down from the heights. High palaces far, cold, not cruel. Wind bracing, hammer blast, freezes the lake of winter's past. The ballad gale, the gray rain and misted light, gales ballad through the dark hued forest. Silver shadows sparkle amid the crystal carts, glistening gleams upon the life, gray and green, stone 
and wet. I'm going to start that over because I have to plug this in now. Second warning. We're fine now. Uh, the Ballad Gale. The, the, sorry. The Ballad Gale. The gray rain and misted light. Gale's ballads through the dark-hued forest. Silver shadows amidst the crystal darts. Glisten gleams upon the life gray and green. Stone wet and life and earth. Clouds rumbled silent through the nameless sky. Empty and endless and serene. The gray rain sea flows across. The hood shrouded hills, the ponds, the rocks, the moss, the ice, the snow, the frost. The mountains, stones, and rocks whisper in the waning world of nothing and the falling silver-misted rain. The cold towers advance and strain the cracking land. Mass heaves and the urgent thunders. The rushing stones proceed ever upon the earth, the storm. The gentle squall blows with soft force. The rainworm rules in gray, shrouding the pewtered altar of the sky. Oceanic darkness covers sound. Powers of heaven blast that damned citadel down. Below the tower which mutes the mind of men. Babel clamors souls and mind. The key to heaven is madness. Amor es paradisum. Paradisum infernum est. Sic amor inferna est. I don't know how my Latin is, as meaning to say, uh, love is paradise, paradise is hell. Uh, uh, if, if, if love is hell, <laughs> it, it is so. Uh, I don't know if that's good Latin or not. I'll be curious to know if it's good or not. Worldly web of dust, deceit, poisonous tree with welling, venom, nine orbs of darkness, light palaces. I'm going to start over. Worldly web of dust, deceit, poisonous tree with welling, venom, nine orbs of darkness, light places, bright palaces, frame and circled madness, heaven, hell, vanish from the stormy night. Fate unfolds with bitter tenderness to snare a hardened pillar with fire that has no name, that nothing this fire which has no flame. Crumble stone, water melt, flow fast, sweet life, wherever the beloved, peace in beauty surges beast. Music falls, forever from the sky power lies in sanity frenzy frenzied dance o night whirl whirl o hour come at last look cut through and never turn back gone into the night a journey unto dawn Generations of anger, anguish, and agony, violent confusion, fear, and pain fade from an inner force. Abstraction enters the spirit. Its hour come round at last to disperse the illusion of the gap with the wave of the unseen hand that shattered that crystalline dream that near dead froze the heart of the world. Slow that fury to love. From haste take its heed, but think no more of the raging of the inner night and float with the world of the transcendent light. Listen to the ancient songs as speech of beasts and birds and hear the forest, the twilight, the wind, the cave, the stars, the water, despite the orderings of human life. Howl a wail of the gray dust that grows before dawn and the deep below that feels the fills and the rocks and the reefs that grace the waves' songs and the prows of the boats that will set sail from the ports on the beaches of fate. 
mountain, spinning in the night, flame with flower upon the wind. Stillness takes the rushing world. Peace is settled upon its haze. And that, I would say, is probably the last of the volcano poems. That's like a second set of them that I've realized is a second set from the following 1982 that was kind of from. Yeah, I'll read this and I'll shut up. This is getting long already. An hour and a half. Hour and a half. Well, that's worth it. It's a good poetry reading. What's doing? Yeah, that's a whole other era. Later miscellanea. miscellanea. But this I'll read, and I'll also the photographic it later. In those years, the world was turned from legend to reality, reality to legend. Myth was made science, science myth. The world was broken. For the creation was undone. A new shape, a formal order of precise ideas and creations came to consume, destroy, change, and spawn what had been the natural mud of chaos and fractal, ra- fractal, random, unconscious creation. In man, the cosmos had come to generate its own recreation according to a concept of consciousness and occasionally conscience. Fractal mathematics now means consideration of the nature of the chaotic cycles that is the reality of the world stuff is brought into the realms of thought and to the potential for potential out- pr- pr- practical applicability. The gates of the universe and of the past and future and life and death and good and evil had been found and opened, rent with such an intellectual fury that it became suggested that they had in fact been destroyed. In fact, they had come into sharper focus and added more into the concrete, yet intelligence was just seen as the fall. And agriculture and grazing culture set to war with each other and against the wild earth and then arose cities and the war with the beast emergent. One of my poems, I made a reference to uh, the Uruk, that's a, a both Gilgamesh and, and Kadu are referred to in that in that verse about Uruk. And of course, well, we'll go on about that, but they, sometimes the, the, the kennings of using are quite complex. Reality beyond the idea pit in which they had been spawned, conscious effort, and the unconscious dictates of the structure of human intelligence, awareness, self, were the double means of this effect, of this mind upon the world, the awakening, the successive awakenings of human consciousness and culture, as much of the awakening of the world mind, the sentience of the material universe. But sentience is our word for something only we are. We are not ourselves all, and ourselves are not on all. We are an organ of the cosmos, a voice, a hand of the universal order of which even the entire framework of our conceptual spiritual existence, Sein in German, is only part of a consummate majesty of our own existence as individuals and as a species and has complications as a mystery within a greater mystery and a fabulous beauty. Our beings, our souls, have been dared against a vast whirling web of fate and fiery and the cold waters of the, of, the, of the universal abyss. And man has walked into the void and set foot upon the ancient moon, despite the very gods in their orbit around the farther sun, became delirious and drunk on the burnt bounty and rape of the ancestral earth and dreamed of empires built of stars and steel. The word for the shaped, the polymolecules, the wholesale recasting of the chemical, physical, biological, the essential, came into play as a matter of scientific discourse beyond the old tripart divisions of rational relevance. Psychology came into dispute as a word, a discipline, philosophy, like science, became a farce. Ecologos in the mass use oriented reorderings, and the poets had gone mad, the heroes had died, the kings defamed, the mob gaped, and the society of the final assault began to prosper to, to prepare. 
the war of conquest against heaven had come. And so it happened, according to the ancestral books. All some came the imperial fleet, the galaxy prepared for yet another another round of the game. So that I might fit into that that thing about Jack and the, there's a science fiction thing where he's talking to a Naga of the great Saurian masters. Uh, it's a science fiction thing. I read a little passage of it there briefly earlier. Yeah, that was kind of neat, wasn't it? But yeah, the old meanderings and shit. I'm going to stop for a while. I need some food, I think. I'm feeling a little bit of a cold. It's cold in here by now. I don't know. The heat's not going to go off soon. I'm almost about a propane. I better call. Uh, yeah, thank you for listening. That was funny. Later, Miss Linnea. Oh, uh, what do we got here? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> this applies to us. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, I better do that one separate. But it was done with maps. So here, draw a line from here to there. This lot is yours. And in they came and gave it name and said it was their right, for right is power if so taken. Unknown, far, wild in realms, lands where no crown has ever trod, lands where the feet that trod it walk it still and still make their claim. This land is ours, for we are its name. A thousand miles away and more, buried in paper a mile deep and dark, is said to be a form of writ which banished out their legacy from their land and made it a fief unto a distant king by right of God his own to divide and take. In that paper mountain, another foul swears upon eternity, upon the green grass and the flowing stream, that all this land is theirs. The solar maps but dream. A fiction spun across the land, sprung to snare a continent by the taking of its form, the breaking of its name, the mapping of its soul, to break its endless hidden fame. Whose law can rule or claim such land, a distant king or a native band? The law of they who walk, who eat, and drink its life for them. Their dominion was first laid. Whose law then shall rule, the native or the crowns? No flag has waved a herald's claim aloft above these vasty peaks. No army has camped these marches out. No hero's graves make claim for this bloodless soil and stone. And so, on the, into the last of all lands founded by time, into the newest lands where none had ever gone. Who dares walk these roads? Who dares walk the while? All but paper in a file. A degree, an elevation, a stake plunged into the ground, a quick sketch, and that is all. And what is caught can be sold or bought and torn asunder for its wealth. The mappers work in stealth. But if you stand upon those highest hills and gaze into the long, mild sky... A blue haze will melt to mountains, and the existence of the land is pure and without taint of spoil. The vast might of Wilderland, still strong in siege and yet unnamed. Out there we are no nation. Our newer tribe does not comprehend its claim, nor theirs, nor to its treasure or its fame, but to this land, to what cannot be named. It is not ours, but in its awe. It is our first home, the last wild land. At the frontier, a truth is writ, a truth so strong it was never mystery, that all our history has been a lie, that paradise exists unspoiled and within our clumsy grasp. Too long were our oldest lands, too soon fallen the newest into time's hard bit. Yet to stand and see where all time is still unchained, to know the incomprehensible, by touch, by taste, by feel, then you know you are of this land, brought to it, to know its ways and be of its kind. We are they who are newly born without famine, without war, without great ruin or noble tragedy. Never have we seen or sown the blade. Our nation's legacy is still unmade. We are the proof of it, our ways said gentle, our lives well fed and full with days. Is all this our world to watch, our easy fading into behemoth maw, or shall we quell the rapine with resolve to hold the map at bay and stay the land, to fold up plans and charts and turn the mountains back to find a way around where none have ever gone?
Two white shirts, a white car. Three of us have seen it near us, around our homes, abroad in our valleys, the wolves. They came to count and mark, to trace out our steps, our minds. Still others of us tell they have seen it before. They know the cars here and everywhere. The rule of law rolls forth into the wildest corners of our land, exploring out forgotten lives, their lies securing risks against the land, governing it by writ and right, wanting to take, taking our lives into their paper nets, our dreams into a paper cage. They dare to follow where we have no leash may go. We choose out the forest way to evade their white wolf steel. The machine of hate that draws the lock on the prison of their minds grooves the, grooves the lies of slavery into their tongues. Secret words, and few are these, well made and crafted out to tell of days now come, where wits must earn the wise to hide safe from cold and seeking eyes. What knowledge there is to know, tethered to caprice and caution, mountain mansions are our home. What would they know? My birth, my fate? Here, take my name, but have you not it already? You want it again? You want to look, to track, to smell, to hound out my soul, to bay? You will not have my tongue. I claim it free, and dare you to try to seal my mind. The gates escape to evermore. The road winds higher, where your white car, white shirts cannot follow. Into the fastness of the land I'll go. Dark secrets you may know, dire consequence and treachery to cave my fall, but then a wall of truth will stand around your deeds and close you in. It is that will stand revealed, for no truths about me were ever, were ever known. If souls will be, must be failed to serve the state, if bonds bound to moderate evil into good for wealth of gain or in health of power, then I cannot lie. Silence must be stilled. Our freedom must speak forth. Into our land you come, white, omnipotent, benign, so you claim. Serving out the system is to take for another what they say is theirs. Show us the page of that. Show us your number, or be forever silent. Give up your claim. Let the free dominions speak their claim. We are the land. It is ours, for we are of it, and you are far away. You lie of right to rule our hidden land by vote, by massive city's distance, by command of house and court. But we are alone and sovereign, of old, of earth. We will not know your law. Our tribe is not your tribe. We were not taken nor ever sold. The title to these hills, the rule above our private mountain ways. Out of this earth, a law is made. I, unto this law, you come opposing foreign. The mountains are well made. The canyons steep and narrow. The rivers bold and powerful. Lakes windy and great dales. No one can hold the land, but we who live it share its life. You will not kill our home. Yeah, and that's the original text of that. That was written during uh, 1984 when I had come back from leaving the Green Party and the, the white car was... Uh, we were being followed by CSIS, basically. It was done with maps. The thing I just read there is there in the originals. We will not know you. Just a second here. Yeah, it's actually a good sequence of political poems. I've got to publish these. A mapping of its soul to break its endless name. Whose law can rule such land? A distant king or a native band? The law of they who walk, who eat, who drink its life? For this dominion, for them this dominion was first laid. Whose law shall then rule? The natives are the crowns. No flag has ever waved a herald's claim aloft above these vasty peaks. Oh, no army has camped these marches out. Well, the Royal Engineers did camp out a little bit, but that's all they did there. So that I read already. That I read already. I'm, I'm in, being self-indulgent right now. I'm just looking at a few things I read already earlier in the session, too. These are not the same things. I'm just looking at what's here. Uh, science fiction stuff. I think that's it. I think that's going to be it. But that was sure lots of fun. And worth doing for the, especially that last bit. 
And these other longer things are going to take a whole day and some lubricants for my throat. I'm getting worn out again now. It doesn't take long. And uh, slowly organize the papers here. And I've got drawers for things now. And to sort these things. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Not right now. Chaos great, call and cry, cracking cradle, crag chasm high. Chaos great, chaos might, dance damned on ridge at world's end height. Chaos great, chaos wide, chaos, chaos, black force ride, chaos grand, chaos bend, chaos, chaos seemings rend. Chaos might, chaos black, the rift, the gap, the dark deep crack. Alone climb that face, your own, the fools, and see your fleshing wash away in secret montane pools. In the night, in the long, long night, there is no thing. Of this only giants and titans and trolls can sing. All your loves, all your hates, all your hearts you cannot bring. Of this only giants and titans and trolls can sing. Beyond, behind, the flame and form, the mist is stirring for an old cold horn. Behind, beyond, the form and flame. Can you ever forget our old true names? Yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening. Uh, 146. Ah, all right, bad. Yeah, I'm going through old stuff here. Crude sketches, scratches. Ashes, blood, and earth washed from living stone. The cave is dark. With tender hand, the woodsman chants in green ballad. Eyes washing heart, stones and sticks. Ashes, blood, and earth chants made to hope. Silence. And their echoes fade. Let me behold the bounty of engulfing stone. Set me upon a mountain high above the broken land. Just is the retribution of the Lord. Meteorology. Of the matter of the earth that coiled round gravity's weight below the border of the void, five categories of substance, five realms interlocked en masse. The atmospheres, winds, airs, weather, storms, essentially the external gaseous shells charged with static and kinetic energies, now I'll pass on that one. I don't wonder. It's not coming off this poetry number. I was just writing thoughts out. Okay, I'm going to do the Wizard of the Beekeeper. Not, not right now. Not right now, though. And the one, yeah, I do love it on three, which has the shiny mountains ringing, ringing green and gold thing. attached to it. Which is that? Creation was the work of God, but God is dead by man's unnatural act. I did a little second ago. But Lover Andre is, uh, is the name of this thing here. Or actually the title is is a Restative. Uh, Beyond the shiny mountains lay a land of rich splendor, green and gold, Bright eyes, steep coast, and shimmering sea. Deep dales that ran from wide north, wide north to south. High plains and forests, stark canyon and dry sage. Lakes bluer than the northern sky. The plunder's begun in humanity's name. A few mountains spared for facade. The land is emptied of unequaled splendor. A century is all the white man took, yet too much. Why must all the earth be ravaged so? At least in this corner, let some breathe, let some earth unmarred. Nurture example of the newer world, the old world's black example, quarantined, yet a fairer land, yet a lovelier dream. Much must be asked of the human spirit for that, but not less than do the mountains demand. Renew the wild, undo the work of human hand. Yep, beekeeper, but I don't see page one. That's beekeeper, so he's here somewhere. 
And uh, <laughs> I'll do this one. I'll do this one. I've been looking for this one. I'll do this by itself as a photo. Just call it item. A man walks up to a man on the street microphone, smiling, and says, I am he I am he of whom it was spoken, but who was never named, and then walked away. The next day, a man walks up to a man on the street microphone, smiling, and says, I am he of whom it was spoken, but who was never named, and was taken away. He was never heard from again, and his name was withheld. Well, I guess that's it. That was fun, though. Our 50 minutes. See you later.